take their own children to be more precious than any other living child on planet Earth. If you watch through the social media, you would have seen several assaults and molestations that have been meted out on children, not just children, even adults. Okay, these are all issues of uh, diversity management. So someone could treat his, his or her own child very well. So your, his or her own child could go to school, to the best school. His or her own child could have the best health care, uh, best mommy's pet and daddy's pet and all of that. But that made, that person called maid, be it man or woman, staying with such persons, they treat them as though they are picked up from one trash and they can beat them. They will even use different hurting objects to, to redesign the creation uh, in, those, in those people, like redesign the creation that God made. Okay, and those are still part of diversity management, right? So it's not just all about the things we talk about um, uh, in the corporate world. Some people are very much okay. Diversity-wise, they are excellent in diversity management in the corporate place. But in their home, they are not diversity managers. There is a very sharp distinction between their children and those of the mates staying with them. All right? And uh, there was one that happened recently. I don't know whether it was this class I shared it. Oh, I was talking about in, um, in uh, executive leadership development. Uh, I was talking about ethical leadership, okay? And uh, after, after I finished speaking, or after I finished that lecture, anytime we do executive leadership, Executive leadership is not examination based, it's an achievement based certificate, right? Okay, it's a professional certification based on levels of top management achievement, right? Okay, but I discovered that anytime we take that course after ethical leadership, you see the number of people will start dropping because it is biting to their body. Like, how do you want me to maintain this kind of ethics? It's not, it's not possible. It does, it's not supposed to be so. Uh, all fingers are, you, you start hearing things like all fingers are not equal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the likes. All right. So when we talk about diversity management, it shouldn't be a one-sided thing. Like some people are excellent in the corporate world. In the home, they are not. All right. We should all be, we should have that all-inclusive um, uh, mindset. Everyone should be treated fairly. We said is 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 a principle of equal opportunities, right? Um, diversity is a pre, the, the one of the founding pillars. There is equal opportunities for all. Okay, so we should. If you don't want to keep that maid, or if the person doesn't want to keep the maid, the person can let go. It's not compulsory that you must have a maid. All right. Um, one happened in Port Harcourt um, earlier this year. Now this one is not a maid. This is a driver. <clears throat> and um, it was shared on social media, a driver that had been driving a particular judge. I've forgotten the name of the judge. Now, this judge, according to the, the, to the lady that was sharing the, the video, who happens to be uh, the man's wife with a child and the man's mother. All right. Now, the woman that is a judge has two hefty children, okay? And he said, every other day, this woman will keep assaulting this young driver. Is it that she's slapping him or she's asking the children to beat him and all of that? And that particular date was actually a terrible one that um, apart from the vocal assault and uh, the slaps from the woman, she had to give her children further instructions to beat this guy. They beat the guy till he turned blue. Okay, and he was bleeding from head to toe. All right. And because probably because she felt she was a judge and the, the husband was a commissioner also in Port Harcourt, she had all the power to deal with people anyhow. That is not diversity. Now, those kind of people in their career, they are looking so flourishing, but internal behavior is is depreciating. Okay, and has far order. Okay, that person lacks 
diversity management, right? No matter how she tries to paint herself in her career, she's actually doing more harm than good in her career. All right, so let's pay attention. Is is a lot of these things are simple, okay? If you hire a staff, you are in Nigeria, you hire the staff from Ghana, or you're in Ghana, you hire the staff from Nigeria. There should be no need for creating bias. You hire the person for result. Then when it comes to leadership, you should also give the person equal opportunity. Okay? You hired someone from uh, from um, um, from China, and you are you are you are you are you are a Kenyan. Okay, you should also give equal opportunities. All right, Mr. Andrew was trying to say something, and um, and I think that that statement could be one of the things that sparked um, sparked the question. Now, in one of the companies. Uh, I was privileged to be a director. Um, we had this professor, we, have a, we, have, we, have, we had a professor there, we had a, a legal practitioner um, who has vast experience in the legal world. Uh, we had an engineer, we had, um, we had a, a, a doctor in, um, in business management, or oh, sorry, business administration, someone PhD in business administration. I think we're about seven of us, okay? And everyone had their own portfolio, okay? But to the prof, look at this, he's a prof, right? But he had, he had a personal issue with the person that had a PhD in business administration, not his qualification, but where he's coming from, <laughs> okay? <laughs> On several occasions, he will call me, and tell me so many things about those people. And say, this person coming to this board, please, you have to be careful. We have to be careful the kind of assignment we give to this person and all of that. Now, that's not part of diversity management. If it is possible, that person should not be part of the board. Or is it that he goes, let the person be, or the person will be, uh, or, or he stays and the person will go. No, no that's not diversity management automatically that person is telling you the prof is already saying that if it happens to be the ceo or the chairman of this board that he will make sure that nobody from that tribe will ever emerge as a board chairman till he leaves if possible he can put it as a law and get the other people to sign it but that's not that those kind of thing does not uh, make a very good representation to organization and for organizations that want to be positioned globally you don't want to be positioned uh, uh, globally you you don't want to be positioned globally and your policies not just on paper even in practice make a very great distinction all right so we have to be conscious we have to be carefully conscious of how to i remember I, I, I kept mentioning mentality yesterday, that mentality is reality. And you might be thinking, I was just saying that for the purpose of uh, motivation. There is, that has nothing to do with motivation, right? That is, in, for, for, for diversity management to be quite efficient and effective, we must have the right mentality, the right attitude towards it. And we just need to understand that, right? Okay, diversity versus equal opportunity. The following table shows comparison of diversity management versus equal opportunity. Diversity management, all employees maximize their potential and their contributions to the company. Equal opportunity, concentration on issues of discrimination. Um, diversity management includes broad range of people. No one is excluded. Equal opportunity understand as an issue for certain groups in labor markets such as women, ethnic minorities, and people with disabilities. Uh, diversity management mainly focused on, um, please, are you seeing my screen? Diversity management versus equal opportunity. Okay, wow. Uh oh, all right. So can you see it now? All right, thank you so much. All right. All right. Engineer Sharif, the way you put now showing as though it's cinema. All right, thank you so much. Sorry for that. 
overlooked. All right, so let me start afresh. Diversity management. In diversity management, all employees maximize their potential and their contribution to the company. On equal opportunity, it concentrates on issues of discrimination. On diversity management, in, include broad range of people. No one is excluded. On equal opportunity, understands um, as an issue for certain groups in labor markets, such as um, women, ethnic minorities, and people with disabilities. Diversity management mainly focus on issues of movement within the company, the culture of the organization, and meeting business objectives and goals. Equal opportunity focuses on cultural change and meeting business objectives and goals is less and premised more on moral and ethical issues. Diversity is on the concern of all the staff in an organization, especially senior managers. Equal opportunity perceives as an issue to do with human resource practitioners. Diversity management does not rely on positive or affirmative actions. Um, equal opportunities relies on positive actions. Now quickly, let's look at the seven Ps approach. We have perspectives, policies, purposes, programs, personnel, practices, and power. So let's look at them one after the other. Perspectives refers to the vision without which the company will not survive. Perspective is the vision, which is by focal ability to see what lies ahead, right? That's perspective. Policies, a sense of vision uh, will lead to appropriate policies, the values or guarantees that make known the intents of the corporation. Purposes, policies give rise to purposes or the why question. It addresses the mission for existence of an organization. Programs, then comes program, the how, the how question. How will the vision, values, and mission of an organization be implemented? Personnel, effective programs cannot run without the right personnel, reflective of the diversity in the company. Practices, then there is practices, or there are practices, the actual conduct of the company in both in each staff and administration, they'll have power. And finally, who has it, who controls it, who has access to it, and who is left out. Steps for implementing diversity. Phase one. Getting started. Phase two, identifying problems and causes. Phase three, organizing solutions. Phase four, implementing implementation. Then phase five, evaluations and consolidation. Now let's look at each one, one after the other. On phase one, getting started. What are the activities we need to do? Building a committed project team, which has a clear brief to manage and uh, implement the project. Then uh, building support for uh, the idea of creating a diversity management project and then setting up um, appropriate structures to support the diversity uh, management project and then scoping the project. That's phase one. Then um, phase two, what are the activities there under identifying problems and causes to gather information on diversity management problems and opportunities using existing data and or survey data to analyze information on diversity management problems and opportunities to obtain comprehensive, obtain a comprehensive profile of diversity in the workplace and to report the project team, to report to the project team and to other project stakeholders. Then on phase three, organizing solutions, the activities there will include to review the problems and opportunities identified in the last phase and prioritize them, uh, to generate a list of solutions and to prioritize the solutions according to agreed criteria, to draw up a detailed plan of diversity management actions, including a schedule of activities which will be implemented in the next phase. Then on phase four, which is implementation, the activities will include to develop an um, implementation program for each activity, to implement activities, to monitor and evaluate activities. Then finally, um, evaluation and cons consolidation. And the activities there will include to see if the objective of the program that's general and specific are met, to assess the effectiveness of the program activities, costs and benefits, to see if the, the process has worked to provide feedback to employees, management and projecting, to gather information to inform future activities. Okay, we'll quickly 
um, watch through this video and then we'll proceed. Please let's step you and uh, watch through this video. Diversity is nowadays actually quickly used as a word. And it's easy to say, oh, we are so diverse in our company and our workforce is coming from all over the world and men and women and disabled and sexual orientation. Everybody is here. The interesting thing is that diversity management is a different thing than having a diverse workforce because it's a big question whether my diverse workforce is in different strata of the organization. So for example, maybe that I have 30 or 40 percent of women in my workforce, but if these 30 or 40 percent you find only on the shop floor or also in management position or let alone you would find them uh, in top management, that makes a big difference. So diversity management is obviously much more. It is a process how I can manage my diversity, one could say, portfolio in the organization. How do I um, combine the human resources I have in the company in such a way that the company gains an added value out of it, satisfying the environment and also reacting or not only reacting but proactively framing the work environment in such a way that I may get the best talents I want for my company for the next decades. Many companies nowadays are trying to be more diverse, to be inclusive and to offer opportunities to people, uh, women, disabled people, uh, aged people or people with uh, another national background. And they are very proud, especially also team leaders are very proud if they succeeded in getting, let's see, let's say one woman or one person from another national background um, on board of their team. And it is very interesting because research has shown that one a team member with a different background does not necessarily or it is even not very probable that this one person would make a difference to the team. And why is it so? Because the team which takes on board this outsider, so to speak, doesn't have to change itself. So it would probably more or less nicely invite the new person to join their system and to get used to the existing patterns. Whereas if you hire at the same time two or three kind of small critical mass, then these newcomers would make a collective impact. They would together uh, encourage each other and make their own statements and like that the whole system would be forced more or less um, to question their way of working, their way of behavior or their, their patterns um, in a more or less conscious way. 
And this would never happen if one only takes one person on board. So because of that, it's very often that you find a top management team, let's say eight men, and then one woman is hired. And you tend to forget that there is also a woman on board because she will tend, it's not a must, but she will tend to behave more or less the same way as the men do. And it would be different if there are two or three women at a time, or two or three or half um, of uh, the top management team with a different national background, that changes completely the setup. So here we would definitely encourage a system to um, uh, courageously uh, take the decision and try out more innovative approaches and hire more uh, newcomers um, at a time. Okay, so I'm sure we, we heard from the, the expert on diversity management. Okay. Um, I'm going to share that link um, in the chat room. So if anyone is interested in watching that um, over and over again um, for better understanding, you are welcome. So I'm going to share that uh, on the chat room right now. I'm sharing the link. So if you wish to, if you wish to, um, If you wish to go through it, you're welcome. Okay, so I just posted the link in case you need it. All right, thank you so much. All right, so let's proceed. The economic benefits of workplace diversity. There are so many benefits to workplace diversity. Let's look at them one after the other. The first one is a diverse workforce is a key driver of economic growth. Any nations, economy grows substantially as more women, racial and ethnic minorities, and gay and transgender individuals enter the workforce. A diverse workforce helps capture the majority consumer market. Okay, so I think each of these captions explain themselves. A greater qualified workforce is recruited by following diversity. Diversity helps to avoid employee turnover costs. Diversity helps organizations to be more competitive in the economic market, Diversity at, the, at top management helps a company reach its full potential. Diversity leads to a more creative and innovative workforce. Diversity, diversity means successful entrepreneurism. And that is all of the benefits and more of diversity. Diversity from one, diversity, okay, I'm going to start from up back. Diversity means successful entrepreneurism. Diversity leads to a more creative and innovative workforce. Diversity at top management helps a company reach its full potential. Diversity helps um, organizations to be competitive in the um, economic market. Diversity helps to avoid employee turnover costs. A greater qualified workforce is recruited by following diversity. A diverse workforce helps capture the majority consumer market. A diverse workforce is a key driver to economic growth. Class, do you know, classifying on the basis of age, it has been found that there are four different generations represented in the US workforce. Each of these four generations has their own priorities and values, providing vastly different perspectives in the business world. These four generations are one generation often called the traditionalists or the silent generation was born between 1920s and the 1930s. There will have people born between 1946 and 1964 are known as the baby boomers. And there will have people born in 1970s and 1980s and they double adopt the gene SS. There will have people born 86 from after 86 rather are called the millennials. 
Uh, then people born in uh, after 86. People, what are people that are born now? What do we call them? <laughs> okay. The challenges to adopting diversity management or diversity. Although the laws mandate equal opportunity in practice, the hiring of disadvantaged and minority group is still lagging behind in relative terms when compared with the majority groups. For instance, it is not uncommon for employers to weed out resumes of women and people of color. In many countries, there are still barriers to the hiring of people from certain states as is seen in news, news report that emanated in the recent past. These practices are certainly undesirable and cast a cloud about the intentions of employers in embracing diversity at the workplace. Further, given the spate of lawsuits about sexual discrimination and harassment on the uh, basis of ethnicity, it becomes clear that more than laws that deal with these issues, uh, we need a mindset change among the firms and the practice of diversity is something that has to be encouraged from the top. It's not just mindset change in the corporate world. My own is that mindset change right from the family. Okay, that's very important. So the major challenge about diversity management here is actually a mindset thing. Okay, is basically a mindset thing, okay? All right. Okay. And then we have um, the ways to encourage diversity. The ways to encourage diversity. How do we encourage diversity? For me, number one way to encourage diversity is first of all, change your mind. Okay, change, change of mind is the first thing. After change of mind, then the second thing for me as a person is to keep changing your mind till it becomes the right mind. And after changing it to becoming the right mind and becoming the most positive mind ever, keep maintaining that positive mind and keep acting according to the dictates of the positive mind. And government will also have their own rule. And this positive mentality is going to be all across, like from, from, from global concepts to, to the traditional family concepts, we also all have to get this diversity all involved, right? If you're going to be a global leader, you must learn how to manage diversity. Wait, wait. Um, today you you could be working with um, you could be working with with people from your country or within your continent. But if you're going to be positioned as a global professional leader in your career, you work with people that their colors, some of the colors you've not seen them before, but you still work with them because why? You are a global leader and you have no choice than to work with them. All right. So it is important we start uh, changing our mindset, right? And uh, in most of my classes, I, I encourage people to go learn languages. Personally, I don't know why um, linguistic intelligence, I don't know why is somehow far from me. I've tried my possible best to improve on my linguistic intelligence. I've, I've registered for French, I've registered for Yoruba, I've registered for Hausa, uh, I've registered for which other word, uh, Portuguese language. But the only thing I know in all of this is the greetings. Come on, Sava. Come on to Tapelevu. That's all I know. Don't ask me any question. If it is Hausa, I know Inakwana, Inawuni, Yayagejia. Uh, that's all. If it is uh, Yoruba, which one do I know, Yoruba? Uh, e e e e e e all those Ekale, Ekaro, Ekushe, um, Eyawo and all of that, that's all I know. I'm, I'm, I'm trusting God that my intelligence linguistically will improve, but that's just by the way. But if you can improve on your linguistic abilities, like having, that, having to know different languages, not just the traditional local languages within our countries, but to know foreign languages, it gives us better ways to manage diversity. And it also gives us better ways to be positioned as um as global leaders right okay so ways to encourage diversity i've given i've given like two now right say so first one is basically around mindset change and two learn about different languages right if you if you are good with linguistic abilities why not learn french learn dutch learn portuguese learn um both uk us english all the different versions of english be learning them okay one day you'll be so shocked 
that one of those languages could be what will position you where you are or where you want to get to. Among the ways in which employers can encourage diversity is by promoting the concept of blind resumes that do not have the name, gender, or ethnicity of the applicant mentioned. This would ensure that the recruiters screen the resume on the basis of applicant's qualification alone and other factors are secondary. Number two, another way to ensure diversity is by sensitizing the workforce to, a, to gender and ethnic issues and to ensure that they are more tolerant of people who are all like them. Number, number three, hence, one needs to understand the difference between having a policy of diversity and actually practicing it by comparing it to the, ad, to the adage about the difference between the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Employers truly embrace diversity only by ensuring that the law is followed in the spirit as well. Number four, the onus is on the management, senior and middle, to ensure that they follow the norms that is required of, the, of, the, of them. The middle management and the managers who directly interact with the teams of people have a greater role as they are the sandwich uh, between the upper management the sandwich between the, upper between the upper management and workforce, and hence are in a position to follow the policies as well as they enforce them. Okay. I noticed one hand up. And okay, thank you. All these my Yoruba people, I will come and learn from you. Okay, finally, tips for diversity at workplace. One tip, one, identify the importance of contributions and uh, the people who contribute. Keep an open mind towards feedback, contributions, ideas, and so on. Give priority to organization's goals above your personal goals. Tip two, promote open and honest discussion of, of opinions. How do you do that? Identify and acknowledge the diverse manners, capabilities, and motivations. Be aware of the benefits or problems that may arise from the diversity. Have an open discussion and uh, discuss various ideas about how to um, enhance the benefits and overcome the problems that result from differences. Tip three, accept people with different ideas and approaches. How do you do that? Ask for opinions and ideas from people, everyone even those whom you do not normally much interact with. Do not exclude people who are known for being difficult or complex. Um, remember that you can get a real solution when a single idea is fleshed out by many others. Tip number next, support out of the boss thinking. How do you do that? Keep an open mind towards differences and view them as chance to improve. Achieve greater flexibility, creativity, and dynamic interactions in your team by having your team um, comprised of people with a variety of styles, attributes, and motivation. Provide enough time for people to, complete, to completely express their ideas before questioning the ideas. Demonstrate active listening by maintaining eye contact and nodding. Value differences presented by the resources. This will help strengthen an organization by tapping into the intelligence of its resources. All right, finally, let's look at this um, case study. Or let's look at this practice questions, rather. Andrew Smith is a colored person and has been working in Helium Incorporated for the past seven years as a programmer. Andrew has noticed that the managers in Helium tend to discriminate against uh, particular racial and ethnic employees and favor employees of their own kind, promoting them and supporting them. What should Helium do to avoid such diversity issues in the workplace? How can the attitude of managers be changed to make them more adept at diversity management? I'm sure we all know the answers, all right? Richard Bronson is the CEO of Globus Incorporated. He has spread the business of his organization across the globe in more than 35 countries, although Globus has a diverse workforce. Richard feels that Globus has not embraced diversity in the true sense. The senior management is committed towards diversity, but the lower management level and shop floor 
employees still have to understand the need for diversity and embrace it. What can the senior management do to make, the, uh, make every employee more sensitive towards diversity? And um, how can the Hoftides model help the employees understand the different cultures of the people they interact with? All right. So all of these have been taken care of in the class. Okay, so this is the summary of all we've been doing since yesterday. And um, at this juncture, um, I will say thank you so much. And then, um, should there be any question? We'll take the questions now. But, Uluwashi. All right, um, Mr. Uluwashi Peters, good evening, happy Sunday, and welcome to class. Please go ahead and ask your question. Good evening, Mr. Banito. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the session. My question is um, concerning one of the ways by which uh, diversity can be introduced to the organization. And you talked about blind CVs. Yes. So I, I want to believe that, one, most especially when we are talking about global organizations now, I don't know, maybe it was in this class or in another class where we had a scenario of um, an organization that hired someone and at the end of the day they realize that person has made a statement that um, violates women's rights in the past. So how does the organization or the HR run background check if such strategy is to be adopted? Sorry, let me, is it background check on blind CVs? Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Um, I think it was in this class we talked about background checks and several um, intellects gave their own view as to background check. Okay, basically, if you're running a background check, you can use the referencing model. Um, like someone suggested, you can use the social media profiling. And you can also use um, a personal profiling, all right? And then you can also try to do um, further research on the person, okay? Uh, questions and all of that. Uh, you, if, if it means hiring experts who are into background checks and all of that, you can go ahead and do that to have more information. But the essence of blind CV is actually to eliminate bias. Like those bias of um, having to recruit based on ethnicity or tribe uh, or, or the likes, all right? No matter how, how you try to avoid diversity, as soon as some triggers start coming in, you might start feeling, um, having that feeling of diversity coming to you. So the best way to avoid diversity completely is to ensure that the triggers are not there. And like I said yesterday, in my own advice to people who want to go into career, as a matter of fact, in your resume, in a, in a simple resume, your, your, your place of birth, your local government, your date of birth and all of that, they are not included in your resume. Your resume is a, prof, a, a, a snapshot of a professional um, achievement, or will I say the snapshot of your competence for a particular job. And that's why most companies will prefer to ask for resume than CV. CV is more comprehensive than a resume. And most people in their CVs, they go ahead giving some information that could trigger some, some bias within the judges. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Honorable Kwame, your line is open. Kindly go ahead. Yeah, uh, Dr. Panito, thank you once again for this opportunity and good evening to all my colleagues. Thank you. My so problem here is that yeah, we are talking about diversity management in the global world yes, or uh, in uh, our organizations. Yeah, you are in organization trying to enforce the equal opportunity or make things equal for everyone. But there is always sabotage from the maybe uh, the executive or mm. the board members. How do you go about this? Okay, thank because you. Because they so think that you are with them. So whatever you want to do, 
If they don't give you, go ahead. You can't do it. Okay. Thank you so much. Sorry, your network is breaking, but I think I got your question. Um, I think it was in level two. Um, when we are talking about uh, quality work life or work life balance, as it were, that uh, Dr. Michael Carfor said something that this thing we are talking about quality work life, it doesn't just come as uh, from the blues, it actually starts from the recruitment process, right? That also goes back to lay such emphasis on this case also. Now, when we are talking about diversity management, I just gave an example of that prof. There are people that in your board, if you notice that these people does not have the right mindset, there is not, it's not composite to have them there. And you know, we have different levels of recruitment. Recruitment is not just for staff. You have recruitment of top management, middle management, low management, you have staff. So at top management level, most often is by appointment, but those appointments are still recruitment. So check for mindset, very important. Check for people who will agree with you on the policies and practices of diversity management. Now, if it is an organization that, um, uh, that is growing and gradually they are moving global and all of a sudden they start having issues on diversity. I think um, they may have to have a, a HR, a global HR consultant to help them in sorting out some of some issues as this. So they may have to be exposed to executive trainings and the likes before they could start adjusting. All right. Or if the person disturbs you too much, you can post him to another country. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Antitrust Lean, good evening once again. And Hello? Yes, welcome. Hello? Okay, Mick, sir. Okay, I want to talk on that and uh, diversity management. Okay. From that interview we watched. Yes. Something I picked was what when the woman said that diversity is a process. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So, and um, what I got from there is that we need to set realistic process. That's right. Yes, and in setting realistic process, make what you want to do known. You know, it's always, we always talk, it's theory. Ah, we don't want, we, we, are, we, are, we are doing diversity management, but in reality, you find out that it is not. That's so right. if, you know you, if, if you know you want to employ 60 blacks or 60 whites, 60% whites and 40% blacks. Let it be known that saying it is 50 50, where we know that naturally it will not happen. And that is why we're having diversity issues in the world. Look, look at the football team. Look at the football team. Every time we're talking about discrimination, discrimination, discrimination against the blacks. That it is always good. Let us be realistic. When we say realistic target, it will help us. Instead of saying, okay, it's 50 50, 50 women, 50 men, it's a lie. We know it's not happening. Even in our university admissions, you, go to, you want to go to the University of Lagos and they tell you catchment area. What is catchment area? It is diversity. So all this is, it's always good to say realistic process. And that was what the woman is actually saying. That saying, um, you know, we, we will do 50-50, we'll do 50-50, when we know that in reality, it does not happen. So it will, all, it will help us in doing our diversity management. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Catchment area is the area where you catch more fishes. That's catchment area. All right. And Mahesha, good evening and welcome. Please kindly unmute. Let's hear from you. Okay, sir. And now I've been thinking about this diversity and inclusion thing. I don't think it's um, a HR strategy. It, to me, it looks more like a business strategy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. That's a... Uh, Okay, but why, why, why that could uh, sound funny? In reality, all HR strategies are to strategically align with business strategies. That, um, if you listen to all of what we did in introduction to HR strategy, we talked about vertical integrations and we talked about horizontal integrations, right? So the vertical integration is uh, where we have the HR strategies aligning with business strategies. That's the vertical integration. And horizontal integration is where HR strategies align with HR strategies. So all HR strategies are supposed to align with business strategies because the whole essence of the HR strategy is to achieve the business goals, right? 
Okay, so why it sounds as business strategy is important that it remains a business strategy because that's what it actually is. All right, um, um, Honorable Andrew, please kindly unmute and give us a voice. Welcome, sir, once again. I just want to ask, are there organizations in Nigeria where this is actually in practice? <laughs> I think this is a research work you have to go and do <laughs> since you're into training. So it will, it will help us get more results faster. Because I, I just actually, I, I have listened to what uh, Madam Trostlin said. Yes, and yes. Uh, I think in, in, in really in, in practice, mm. I don't know, because all over the world, whether in Nigeria or in, or in America or in the, or anywhere, mm. you still have people with biases. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this thing, they, they, they bring it to the workplace. Mm. People will say, oh, he's from Nigeria, and it's, it's an African uh, organization, but we say, because Nigeria, like what uh, one of our brother from Ghana said sometime, when GT Bank went to Ghana, to, to Ghana mm. you know, they're trying to do certain things and uh, thinking that, uh, you know, there are sentiments everywhere. And uh, in reality, I think it's one of the area that you we spoke about during this lesson that I felt in practice. I, I'm not seeing it. Mm. Well, and uh, like if we if we watch through the lines of all the whole classes, we'll find that, that one of the most predominating lines is that this diversity thing is more common in theory, but in practice is not often the case. Okay, and just like you just pointed out there are some triggers that have registered in the minds of people and that's why the number one primary tool to drive diversity management is mindset change and this thing called mindset change it doesn't happen in a second there are some people it will take them five years to change their mind it will take them 20 some it will take them 50 some it will take them their whole lifetime before they change their mind but that whole process begins with um, a decision to have a mindset change okay so that is important for us to understand. Then, um, like I also said, there are some triggers. One of the basic approaches they, they, uh, that, that also has been suggested in this class is to use blind resumes or do background research, right? Blind resume removes most of the triggers. On blind resume, you don't see picture. On blind resume, you don't see date of birth. You don't see um place of birth you don't see local government of origin tribe religion color you don't see all those things that's why they are basically a blind a blind resume is just um more of competency um competency based uh, cv all right it, it doesn't tell much about the person's color so that will help in reducing the triggers so judgment can easily be made without having those triggers in place all right, but for we that are global HR professionals, we have to pay attention because some of us are we, we end up in the consulting um, in the consulting field, okay, and the, in the consulting field you might end up for multinationals or end up consulting for multinationals, and you might have them or have some of your clients face some of these issues. So we have to do more research and do more more extra studies. And, and like, remember when I started this class, I said diversity management is more on experience, okay? One, your experience level. Two, is based on observations. You have to observe before you begin to say things and before, before you begin to install policies and the likes, all right? And I also made mention of understanding the dimensions of culture uh, that Hoftaide mentioned, okay? We need to pay attention to the different dimensions of culture, understanding those dimensions of culture. Thank God, when we are dealing with dimensions of culture, we're able to identify the different continents and countries and um, religions and, 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 and 
some others that have um, more magnified um, um, presence in some places, right? So with such knowledge level and observations follow through with experience backed up with it and some extra uh, professional support and advice, then we can start the process of diversity management. Okay, we can't, not that we'll just jump into it, we'll start and then we'll keep growing till we get there. Okay. You see? <laughs> okay, experience, exposure, and network. All right. It said that, but name should not really matter now. Competency and skill should matter more. Well, it depends on the person hiring. If the person has a, diversity issues or triggers that, that, that lead to diversity it might cause issues. He said, name, yes, name shouldn't matter, but a name could be a, a driver. That's another, that could be a trigger. Very important. Okay. <laughs> and that's why you see some people rebranding themselves. You see uh, Chukwe Meka or Dinkeme. All of a sudden, his name is Kelly Brown. Which state are you from? I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Do we have any other contribution or further questions um, as we proceed? Do we still have uh, Mr. Patrick Oche in this compound? Okay. Honorable Patrick, are you, are you still here? Please, if you're here, can you unmute? Let's hear from you. Honorable Patrick, are you in this class? Okay, while you're trying to unmute, let's hear from Wale Adekoya. Good evening, sir. Welcome to class. Yeah. Good evening, Dr. Banito. Thank you so much, and, um, sir. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, thanks for the wonderful time we've had uh, in all through your lectures, not even that of today. I just want to comment on what one guy said. I couldn't okay. pick his name again. Okay. Saying that uh, diversity, he doesn't see diversity in reality. Okay. You know, okay. I, I, have, I have something to say to that. Is it okay. to say or against now? Because I know of a, a friend mm. presently working with uh, Card, I mean Guinness, Nigeria. Okay. And uh, by May, yeah, we are in June now. Last yes. month, she was uh, giving uh, a, a kind of uh, is it appointment of promotion now to mm -hmm. work. I mean, I think being transferred to work abroad from here. And okay. then when she gave me the testimony that she is now working with uh, with the is it Asian continent and I mean the board of the directors and all that. So yeah. diversity is still in operation. It's yeah. only that, uh, just like what you have said, is the thing is just being picked up little by little. That's why right. the people with that kind of uh, mind, the absurd mind, will be fading off. But it's still in operation. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, sir, for picking that. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, there, are, there are actually quite a number of companies that um, um, they are practicing diversity. Okay. Uh, like, uh, I know of uh, UPS, uh, most of us know UPS, UPS um, International, of which they are, they are head of uh, marketing and our head of business development. He has been here often, who is a, a strategic partner with IPM. Uh, according to him, they don't have issue with promotion. So you can be in Nigeria and they promote you to Dubai, from Dubai to US. And, and I think they have a fair fair uh, diversity management um, plan. And there are, there are actually so many other companies, okay? But I think what we are all trying to say is that uh, the effect is gradual, or the effect is quite small, but, and the process is gradual. So as we proceed, we'll get better. All right, thank you so much for all the contributions. Um, we'll be rounding up this class by, in the next 30 minutes. So in the next 30 minutes, <laughs> this is, open discussion and uh, Honorable Patrick Oche, Z ZC, my co-host will be anchoring this place. Please, this is not government politics. This is workplace politics. All right? <laughs> so, so, 
Anybody that is coming to throw up his own notion should please know that we are looking at. And, and I will really appreciate, or we will really appreciate um, very terrible examples from um, our own experiences, right? Okay, so on this note, I will hand over to Honorable Patrick Oche to take over. Hello, good evening, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening and welcome. Thank you so, so much for this uh, privilege. You are now a co-host, so anybody you want to talk, you open the person to talk. Anybody you don't want to talk, you close the person. You have the power now. Oh, thank you, sir. Name. All right, sir. All right, good evening, class. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Um, we are talking on uh, workplace politics. As we all know, the world. Sorry, sir, your, net, your network is breaking. Oh, oh, oh. The network is, is quite breaking. Uh, talking about organizational, okay. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can is hear it better you. Now? Yes, it's better now. Okay. Okay. The next uh, few minutes, we'll be talking on uh, workplace politics. How politics in the workplace affects performance, how politics, how we can use politics in the workplace to achieve results, how we can use politics in workplace to get things done. All right, let's move, sir. Okay, I should move this slide. It's a discussion class, so. <laughs> all right. Oh, okay. I... All right. All right, that's okay. 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 It's like, it's like your network is actually playing politics, according to Lua Shades. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's happening. I've changed the network. Uh, okay. Let me change again. But it's like it's terrible now. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, the workplace uh, in general. We are talking about how politics in the workplace affect the individual that make up the workplace, affect the uh, entire organizations, and affect their produce. That is the output. Workplace politics is a behavioral um, act, uh, framework that people as beat. And this workplace uh, politics happen in all organizations, whether we know it or not, it happens because um, there is um, competition for resources. Different departments, different personnel in getting their uh, uh, job done require some levels of um, politics either with the hierarchy, as it were, or the management. But we have different levels of this um, politics that is heady in an organization, especially in the workplace. We have um, minimal level, which is, okay, it exists, but you know, it's not a consign. We also have, um, Moderate. Moderate level is okay, there is a balance of things. It exists, there's a, a concern for it, but it doesn't uh, get out of hand. 
whereby it will affect the entire organizations. Um, we also have a high, high uh, level of uh, politics in the workplace, whereby you see different employees having to play out um, policies. And this policy could be for organizational uh, perspectives or personal perspective, which is internal. So in the high level um, policies, if it's not managed well, employee could just drill um, from the entire goals of the organization because it's actually uh, after his own um, goals. Maybe it could be for promotion. He's playing out so that he can gain favor to be promoted to a particular position or be awarded some recognitions and all of that. Then we have another level, um, pathological, which is to the extreme, to the extreme. And we know that um, anything that we do in the workplace that is to the extreme has its own disadvantage. That means it cannot be managed. When it is to the extreme, it is unhealthy for the organization. Very, very unhealthy for the organization because the various aspects that make up the organization will, will be focused on how to get things done for their own advantage. At the, at the end of it, the organizations suffer it the most. And uh, sometimes the environment also suffer from it. Um, we have, and these things are triggered by behavior. These policies are triggered by different behaviors in the workplace. Are you still there? I'm with you, sir. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, and we have we also have uh, consequences for politics at workplace. It might not. Um, you might not like to know how to compare how. Okay, what I do is it um, actually a politics in the workplace, and or am I playing politics, or the other person, my next. Uh, colleague, is it playing politics? Let's look at some of those um, consequences. All right, sir. Sorry, before you proceed, sir, um, this is actually a discussion. It's not okay. a lecture. So we are meant to interact. Let's have from people um, okay. how politics has helped to drive. Um, what is politics in the organization? How has politics helped? Or how has uh, politics brought them back uh, what kind of politics do they have and all of that? Let's have from, there is nobody here that have not had political experience in the workplace. Okay, yes, so sir. let's let's have, and, and you did not introduce yourself, we don't know you. Okay, um, my name is uh, Patrick. Uh, uh, it is well known, this network has started again though. The network has started again. Oh. Is it better now? Yes, it's better now. Okay. I said my name is uh, Oche Patrick Oche. I'm a student also in this class. Okay. All right. So somebody's hand is up. Are you giving the person permission to talk? Okay. Okay, good evening. I am Michael Riken Nokafo. You're welcome, sir. Okay, work. Um, honestly, I'm not, <laughs> I thought I was not going to talk because I'm not too strong, so I, I do more of typing. But Sorry. the topic in question is one of my best topics. Okay. <laughs> because it's one of the ways I've achieved, um, I've climbed my personal ladder. Wow. Yes, workplace politics, and I always say that politics, workplace politics is not a bad thing. Of course. Workplace politics is 
the unsaid guideline of your um, professional life. For instance, if, they, if you're employed as a HR, for instance, and they give you your JD, there are some things that is unsaid, that is not said to you, and that will never be said to you till you leave the organization. But those things are expected of you. That is the workplace politics. So workplace politics is you being able to achieve what you want to achieve uh, with little or no stress or with tact and diplomacy. Let me give an instance. Um, for instance, you, you want to get a policy in place that we help you. And you've seen that this policy will, um, maybe there might be resistance. To make, to make sure that there's no resistance, you start talking to, okay, talk to the head of compliance, why this policy needs to go, why this policy needs to come in place, talk to finance, talk to the, to the, so talk to the GM, talk to the MD, talk to the CEO and every other person. So that once this document gets to their table, it gets signed. Workplace politics, it's also knowing that they are power that be in a particular place. In, in as much as uh, I'm not preaching uh, um, preferen being preferential, but there are people, the, the way you, you, you talk to a GM when a GM comes late is not the way you talk to a supervisor when he comes late. It is workplace politics. So workplace politics, it's, it differs in organization, but in that one needs to be tactical, one needs to be think, critical thinking, one needs to be diplomatic, and above all, one needs to apply high emotional intelligence in achieving workplace politics. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable Patrick, are you still there? Yes, sir. Okay, this is your this is your show. In fact, let okay. me mute myself. I will mute myself. Yes, sir, don't go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. That is a great contribution. Thank you, Michael Ikena. It's like your network is still fluctuating, sir. Yes, sir. Please, can you can help me uh, put the hands up. Okay. okay, but my own is just to appoint the hand, so your own is to coordinate your class. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Honorable Kwame, please, your line is open, sir. Kindly unmute and go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I need to. Yes. Yeah, I earlier asked a question, but my network frustrated me that I couldn't hear your answer. Mm -hmm. I don't prefer, I think that I've been uh, listening. Now, we are talking about workplace politics. Mm. Um, to me, I think that it has a disadvantage and advantage. That's right. The advantage is the, when you are applying your policies very well to the people that you know can buy your policy and implement it. That will help you. But while you have um, the other side, uh, the disagreement come in, and then they say that, okay, it is uh, something that we can, we think it will be good, but for now, we cannot do it. So in that case, you must know how to play your policies or your policies with the, the policy that you want to implement. Now, when it come to sharing your point or your policies with the people, sometimes uh, uh, behavioral change also come into play. If you don't uh, ask the people the right question, put the question on the table for them to discuss, and then you tell them why you need this thing to be implemented, why you need this is, or, or this will be okay with us. That one will be a different thing altogether. And then the other thing is that maybe you, you have your people on the other side that, okay, I want my people to support me. So let us do uh, power influence. That one, I don't, I don't like that. If you are playing that politics in that way, it is going to affect you one day. Sorry, you are making a very wonderful point there, but the network is breaking. 
uh, the network is breaking, sir. We are so sorry, but you're making a very great point there, but the network um, started fluctuating. So sorry. Okay. Sorry, the network um, started fluctuating. So sorry about that. Okay, but thank you, Honorable Kwame. If be told me, Taiwo, you can unmute yourself. Mr. Ibito Mitaiwo, you can unmute yourself and speak. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, it's breaking. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening to you all. Good evening, good evening sir. Okay, good evening, everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for giving me that topic. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? We can Hello? hear you. <laughs> Hello? Okay, okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Okay, okay. Now, when we are talking about uh, workplace uh, politics, it is something that we cannot do without in administration. Uh, as long as existence existence, workplace policy continue. You see, there are advantages and disadvantages to uh, workplace policy. But as employees in the system, you use to development of your system. Now, why am I saying If you are a human source manager, or let's say manager and also, if you don't have to play politics, there are policies you want to implement. You will not do that. Because there are some things you want to do that maybe times in the board or some other thing that it results in. And therefore, kind of policy, uh, policy will be drawn down. But if you know how to do your policy in an organization, when you open an automatically, any good that you want to catch, you will be able to solve with it. I think. In various places I worked, I used that, and uh, it has actually helped a lot. And how do you do that? If you want to actually do your own thing, there are some things that you want to do. There are people that are actually matters. There are some things you want to count. You have to discuss with them, get their opinion, get their ads. And by the maybe in a body you throw it out, or at least some other people are about what you do. And uh, at the end of the day, that will seem to be approved. And that is why, as a manager in a place, you must ensure that be yourself to things or people that actually matters. Matter how you are in an organization as a manager. If you don't know how to play your policy, you may succeed. I'm saying this from my friends. I have worked in an occasional uh, setting. And so I think up to that of studies, so I know what I'm saying. There are some policies that I want to use. And by the time I get in ones that I know actually match, I went to Abirans, maybe management me, and I said, this is what I want to do as far as my own domain is to see the support immediately. But there are people they have genuine issues that will help the session. When they raise it, they will say no, because they don't actually know how to play politics. They know how to play politics as an employee in an or as a manager automatically very, very sure. 
you will see. But as a manager, you, you have to be very, very careful for that are working at you. Because when it comes to this uh, uh, work policies that will normally what we call workplace service. Some people do eye service to early, uh, to early gain work favor. So, but if, if as a media now, you resolve automatically watching, you know that thing that you resolve that you only want from there. And you know that person point when it comes to issues. I have that thing. Present sessions. I have one that is very close to me, do those things. I have another thing that is not close to me, but he knows job very well. So, most of those things that I want to carry out, I most sometimes appoint him rather than appoint people that are very close because they actually do the job. So, as a manager, you must be careful. As a manager, you must do because on things we call it lobbying. See, part of it is to do that. I think uh, to actually uh, for someone to sell to workplace. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, sir. Taiwo. Ah, Next contribution. <laughs> Hello. Okay, okay. Okay. So I'm in a meeting. Mr. Tao, please um, mute yourself. Okay, okay yeah. I don't want to hear you. Mr. Andrew, please unmute um, yourself. Mr. Mr. Andrew, the floor is for you. Okay. Mr. Andrew, it's like you're having family meeting. Good, good evening, everybody. Sorry for that. I was trying to <laughs> chase my children away from uh, where I was. <laughs> <It's> well, <laughs> Sorry for that. Good evening, everybody. You're welcome, sir. Uh, I, I will start by saying that we are all political animals. Hmm. Uh, politics could be negative and it also it could be positive. And uh, I, 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 strongly, I strongly believe that as managers, every, every one of us should understand uh, the politics, uh, politics that are being played in our workplaces. If we don't understand the politics, the person might not be able to go far. Because one of the ways of inf improving the qualities of life or getting things done, getting the right things done, is through politics. Uh, like uh, someone uh, said, during, I think it was SME doctor when he he was saying that he, that was his own area of in, uh, interest because it has been a, a, for for him he has benefited from the office politics. Politics. Every manager should understand some of the unwritten unwritten uh, way of life, unwritten things that you will never see anywhere, and so. For that case, every, individuals need to be patient when you come into an organization and understand the way of life of the people. You understand unwritten, unwritten co, uh, uh, code of conduct. You understand how to bypass uh, individuals in order to get some things done. But when politics become a, a way of trying to destroy the other persons in order to get to the top, then it is a negative politics. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Great contribution. Okay, right. there, are, there are some comments. There are some comment. There are some contributions in the chat room. I don't know whether you would like to check them up. Okay, sir. Should I should I read for you, or you would like to go through them yourself? Uh, okay. Uh, let me go through it. Okay, sir. Okay, from um, Honorable Theophilus Kagbere, he said, politics is present everywhere, wherever people interact. Competition for resources, influence, power drive politics. The greater the lack of transparency, the greater the incidence of politics. Great one. From um, Pirae, Pirae, 
He said, workplace policies can either be positive or negative. Yes. Um, that's why we talked about the extreme and the moderate and the minima. To the Sorry. extreme, then because you use it, observation error goes. And it, yes, sir. Your network was breaking. Sorry, but okay, it's, norm sorry. it's normal now. It's okay now. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. Okay, uh, the, the contribution from uh, Pirae Pirae workplace politics can either be positive or negative. Is right, in not favorable to oneself. Yes, when it's to the extreme and it's internal, it is it's not healthy for the organization. When is to is used to achieve the overall goals of the organization, beautiful is the positive side of um, politics. And as HR, as HR professionals, we we are to set the pace for this in our organizations. And why do I say that? The, from all the classes we, we, we have been through, you know, in um, HR, how we bring different people into organizations, you know, uh, molding people, coaching and uh, training people, you know, we, all this are done in line with the, uh, the business goals of the organization. So we, we have the ability of molding these people that are within our workspace to actually play to the overall goals of the organization. And that's why emotional intelligence is very key for all HR professionals. Okay. I think that is what I can see here, sir. Okay. For, from Mayhenshaw, is it true? Politics in the workplace is inevitable. I dare say, but how it, it is played matters. Playing dirty in order to advance at another's detriment is a no-no, sadly. I have been sadly I have been at the receiving end in recent times. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. <laughs> Great contribution. That is why the reason for this class is not just for us to get um, the certificate like uh, Dr. Banito will tell us, is to go out to influence others within our organization, within our networks, because the knowledge we receive is not just only to the, the few that are within us. Our networks, you know, our colleagues in other organizations, by the time this this course continue, you know, the way the, the past will continue to fade away. And before we know, the okay. society that we all want to. Sean, any other one, sir? Uh, I think uh, there are just some, I, I'm seeing a question from Truslin. She said, at what point does politics conflict with diversity? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, thank, 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 that, yes, thank you so much. I think at this point, uh, we can call it a time. We just have uh, barely seven minutes to go. So I can summarize from here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please, um, we really appreciate. For those of us that are close, um, um, you can just put your hands together for Honorable Patrick for being a co-host in this uh, program tonight. Uh, it has been wonderful having you on this program. Okay, um, everything I've been saying has been wonderful. I 
needed us to have an interaction because this is what we face every day. Um, there is an omission I saw here. I would like to read it from Honorable Theophilus Kagwe. He said, workplace politics is an unavoidable nuisance. It is a reality to come to terms with. There are people who exert, please, this is the place I want us to take cognizance of. He said, there are people who exert influence in an organization beyond their functional areas. One must recognize them. They are critical in the effectiveness or ineffectiveness and can be of disruptive influence. All right. Um, Mr. Kwame also was trying to mention something like this before his network um, went off. All right, so politics can be good, politics can be bad. And uh, just like a, a native statement that Mr. Andrew made, he said, human beings are products or we are by nature political beings. For the fact that we are social, I think there is, a, there is also a place that uh, Mr. Kagwe made, made a statement that wherever there is interaction, wherever people have to meet, there is always a politics. Yeah, by default, we are products of, um, um, or we are by nature political beings, right? Okay, so we can play politics for the good of the organization. And we are, according to Mr. Patrick or Honorable Patrick, we all have extreme negative politics. It can actually affect the organization. And there is something that was made mention here. Um, Dr. Mike Okafor mentioned it, and um, uh, um, Priye mentioned it also, talking about emotional intelligence uh, as an enabler for politics. And um, uh, Priye added um, uh, performance as part of the enablers for politics. All right. Now, if you ever hear me talk about executive leadership, executive leadership all the time, tell, telling us, okay, there is need to build on executive leadership and all of that. All of that has to do with how to understand workplace politics and how to manage workplace politics. And we can use workplace politics for good. If it is not well managed, it can destroy a whole organization. All right. So to avoid uh, stories that touch the heart, please, politics is not evil. Only if we don't make it evil or it's not bad, only if we don't make it bad. Politics is what will make, make at it. Politics is like, a, uh, is like an empty, uh, a empty computer. The way you install it matters. Okay, if you install virus to the computer, it will play the politics of virus. If you install good software into the computer, it will give you what you want. So the best bet is politics originate from culture. Whatever the organizational culture, whatever the organizational behavior is saying, that's where the politics will originate from. All right? So let's, let's understand that and let's um, pay attention to how to effectively use good political strategies. I love, I love the intro that uh, Dr. E. Ken actually brought in. That illustration is actually excellent. And that's where um, um, uh, Honorable Patrick talked about internal politics. Politics are the unsaid things within the organization that is yet unsaid, but we are expected to, to know them, all right? Uh, that's on the positive side, and also have the negative side. All right, and more importantly, let's understand the tools that can help us play a better politics, like good politics instead of negative one. Emotional intelligence, uh, executive leadership skills, or generally leadership skills, uh, then uh, focus on performance, all right, rather than giving excuses, and um, good observation. What are you observing? Where does power lie? Who are those influencers within the organization? You need to observe and identify them, and then make very good evaluation on how politics is appreciated in the organization, all right? So all of these are the things we are supposed to treat in this class. So tomorrow morning, we'll just rush through them. Remember, our class tomorrow morning is um, 5.30 a.m. and Tuesday, 5.30 a.m. on Wednesday, 5.30 till Friday, 5.30, all right? And I trust that by Friday, we should be done and dusted with. So, um, what we'll do is that we'll take 20 minutes for discussion, general discussion. So whoever that is anchoring that topic will anchor it. Then we'll take um, 
um, 35 minutes to just flash through uh, the remaining programs and then we can do a read up on our own. But at this juncture, I just have two minutes to go. And if there's any question, uh, please we can ask the questions now. Um, examination is starting July 4th. Okay, examination is starting July 4th. So please, um, let's, um, let's endeavor to make sure we pay attention to reviewing our manuals. And then let's try to use our teams. I discovered that from group 13 down, group 13 to 15 or so, uh, like they dissolve themselves. Okay, so <laughs> uh, we, we have left them as they are. So if you're in group, in group 10, uh, sorry, group 13, 14, 15, 16, like they, they dissolved themselves. They had political meeting and they, they dissolved themselves. Okay. All right. So if there is any question, we'll take those questions now. Honorable Patrick, your hand is up. All right. Um, SME doctor, I actually sent a message to you on your WhatsApp. Maybe you may have to check it. I think you sent a message to me. Just check your WhatsApp. Uh, you may have to see the link to the manuals. Thank you so much. And please, if you've not received manual, you can just be raising your hand now or just be commenting here so that we'll just send you the link you download. All right? Please, if you've not received your manual, just make a statement in the why others are making their own statement. I will just be sending it to us, please. Thank you so much. All right, Honorable Patrick, you're welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. Sorry, I have to take you back a little bit. I okay. joined the class late. The information you gave earlier, at the mm -hmm. beginning of the class, I didn't get it. I didn't quite get it, sir. Okay. So sorry. Um, I'm going to take care of that right now. Just give me like a second. Let me type this link. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you so much. We are trying to. Um, I was saying that for those of us going for level three. You're going for level three, and you still want uh, to have a certificate in um, strategic human resource management. You can get the boat, like you can get your level two and get your level three. If you're going for level three and you want to get level two, all you need to do is pay for the certificate of level two, then you get that. Okay, and I said, um, if you're going for level three, you are expected to have three certifications at the end of the day. That's if you wish to go for the two certifications. You get three certifications at the end of the day. So you have your global, um, certified global human resource management professional, certified um, strategic human resource management professional. Then you have a certified senior management professional, senior HR management professional, rather. That's the three you get if you're going for level two and level three together. Uh, then if you're going for level two and you want to go for level one certification, you do the same thing. You take exam for level two, then pay for the certificate for level level one and level two, so that you have the two. Then you have um, certificate, a certified um, strategic human resource manager, plus um, um, certified associate HR professional, which is only available Certified Associate HR Professional and Certified Senior HR Professional, those ones are only available on induction and you don't pay any dime extra for that. Provided you're getting inducted, those are the part of the privileges that come alongside with your induction, membership certification and license, right? Okay, so those are the, those, are, those could be probably the information you missed. Okay. All right. Is there any qu any other question for me? Okay. I'm seeing a question. I, say, I noticed that there is no independent topic on legal aspects on HRM. There are actually legal topics uh, on HRM, and the legal. In fact, everything we've been dealing with. If you've been following this class. When we're talking about contracts, letters, and all of that, all of those things, we kept on mentioning the legal side, the need to have um, 
um, a legal uh, practitioner within your HR domain, that's when, it, when we're talking about contracts. And in this case, contracts I'm talking about is the recruitment and all of that. And then managing exits, managing, um, in fact, generally managing industrial relations, you need legal practitioners. Okay, so. And you cannot really divorce law. You cannot divorce law from HR. It's not possible. You can't divorce the two. Okay, is there any other issue of course? I said I didn't get management. I didn't get diversity management. I will find out from that link why there is no diversity management. Okay, the WhatsApp group is open. So in case you might not be able to make your request here, you can make your request in the WhatsApp group. Okay. That's request for manual. All attendance has to be signed here. If you miss attendance here, we don't send attendance to the WhatsApp group, please. Mm. Is there any other issue of concern? Or can we call it a night from here? Can we call it a night from here? All right, so tomorrow morning, 5.30, and God will bless you. For now, I've taken extra five minutes of our time. Thank you, and God bless you. Enjoy a wonderful week. See you tomorrow morning.